Sainyao secretary Shen Mingyue scolds the boss every day. Who is a good president? Instead of eating steak and foie gras in Michelin restaurant, he asks his secretary to make dumplings and steam mantu every day. Do you think he is insane, husband? Why don't you speak, husband? In Jingdong hee hee, should I curse myself? Shen Mingyue always thought she could live such a sweet life of thinking about her husband at work and scolding her boss after work forever. Until one day, she discovered that the man beside her who slept with her all night had two phones and two names. Excuse me, should I call you Mr. Yin or Mr. Sang? Chapter 1 Code My Photos You are listening at NovelFull.audio When Shen Mingyue's phone rang, it was 10.10 in the evening. At that time, she was moaning under Yin Jingdong, with fine beads of sweat covering her forehead. She shyly closed her eyes, enduring waves of pain. The sudden ringing of the phone did not diminish Yin Jingdong's interest at all, but Shen Mingyue felt very uneasy in her heart. I, my phone rang. These words came from Shen Mingyue's throat, so faint that they couldn't be heard at all. Yin Jingdong seemed to have really not heard him. He continued to kiss Shen Mingyue's neck, and Shen Mingyue's slender and fair wrist pushed Yin Jingdong's chest, but it couldn't be pushed away at all. His scorching heat spread to her, and she seemed to be ignited, somewhat seductive, but softly shouted, No. It is this kind of half-pushing and half-acting that further stimulates Yin Jingdong. After finishing, he hugged Shen Mingyue from behind, and then leaned against the bedside over there and lit a cigarette. Shen Mingyue finally endured the soreness and pain on her body and took her phone over. The phone call just now was made by elder brother Shen Bingcheng. Big brother asked Shen Mingyue for something. Shen Mingyue had a clear idea in her heart, but she wanted her to marry Jiang Ze, the second generation ancestor of the Jiang family. The phone rang again, and Shen Mingyue bravely took the phone over, still the big brother. Hello, big brother. Where are you? Let's schedule a time to go to the Jiang family and talk about your marriage, said the elder brother. Big brother, I'm married. Flash marriage. Before Shen Bingcheng could finish speaking, Shen Mingyue interrupted big brother. Shen Mingyue glanced sideways at Yin Jingdong, who was smoking. When he heard Shen Mingyue say, married, he lightly supported his forehead. On the other end of the phone, there came a heart-wrenching silence. Mingyue, don't joke, Shen Bingcheng didn't believe Shen Mingyue's words at all. In order to make you look up in front of Jiang Ze, I specially offered you the secretary position at Sangshir Group. You will be preparing for the interview next Monday. Sangshir Group Sangshir's secretary Shen Mingyue quickly sat up from the bed. Don't you know about Sangshir and me? Shen Mingyue once withdrew from Songshir's marriage, but in front of Yin Jingdong, she felt embarrassed to say so. Yin Jingdong next to him heard Shen Mingyue say, Sangshir, and glanced slightly towards her, but he didn't say anything, and Shen Mingyue didn't care either. I used the name, Shen Yu, to submit my resume to you, and he wouldn't know it was you. Besides, it's different now. You used to be the eldest lady of the Shen family, but now the Shen family has a lot of debt. What else does the Shen family have besides? Shen Bingcheng asked Shen Mingyue in reverse, I'm not all working at the Sangshir group now. As a private secretary of Sangshir, it can elevate your value. In the future, I can speak for you in front of Jiang Ze. After that, Shen Bingcheng hung up the phone. Shen Mingyue was momentarily speechless. It is estimated that the elder brother's life will not be easy either. He married the daughter of the Jiang family. After the bankruptcy of the Shen family, he lost his noble son Ora and his status in front of his wife was greatly inferior. However, the elder brother's brother in law, the second generation ancestor of the Jiang family, Jiang Ze, had always coveted Shen Mingyue's beauty and forced him to do her job. Shen Mingyue furrowed her brows tightly and lay back in bed. The soreness and intense pain hit her, and she realized later how wild Yin Jingdong had asked her just now. Shen Mingyue closed her eyes and was at a loss. 
She approached Yin Jingdong for a flash marriage just to avoid the uneducated second-generation ancestor of the Jiang family, who was known for his food, drink, prostitution, and gambling skills. Yin Jingdong was introduced by one of her classmates, who described him as a young talent and industry leader. At that time, Shen Mingyue was in a hurry to find someone, and Yin Jingdong appeared at the right time. Moreover, Yin Jingdong was so handsome, charming, sexy, and restrained. Shen Mingyue was immediately attracted to him, and he could easily let the self-proclaimed handsome Jiang Ze look in the mirror. Most importantly, Yin Jingdong has a spacious three-bedroom, two-living-room house. The house that my father bought for Shen Mingyue back then has already been auctioned off. After obtaining the certificate from Yin Jingdong, Shen Mingyue naturally moved into his house. Do you have time tomorrow to accompany me to see my brother? He won't believe I'm getting married without bringing the real person over. Shen Mingyue spoke for a long time before making this request to Yin Jingdong, after all, she didn't have a deep friendship with him before. The compensation is as we agreed before, 1,000 yuan at a time. My brother is an important family member, and I'll give you 15 yuan. I haven't been free these days, something's up, Yin Jingdong said in a flat tone. Upon hearing this, Shen Mingyue became even more anxious. He didn't even see her in person. How could his elder brother and Jiang Ze know that she was married? Also, since he cannot play the role of a husband, why did Shen Mingyue get married? Shen Mingyue was full of anger. After her flash marriage, she requested Yin Jingdong for the first time. He would shift the blame and let Shen Mingyue off the hook. He talked a lot of big talk, but when it came to actual actions, there were always grandiose excuses. Can you? Shen Mingyue wanted him to adjust the time. It's very important, Yin Jingdong knew what Shen Mingyue was going to say, but he turned it down with a few twists and turns. How important is it? Shen Mingyue retorted, her tone not very good anymore. Yin Jing turned his head to examine her and said, very, heavy, important. Yin Jingdong didn't say anything, he only said these three words. Shen Mingyue stared intently at Yin Jingdong, with her back teeth almost gritted. She regretted it a bit, this flash married husband is not easy to handle. Since there is no room for negotiation on Yin Jingdong's end, Shen Mingyue wants to show their marriage certificate to Shen Bingcheng. She struggled out of bed and stumbled when one leg landed on the ground. She turned to look at Yin Jingdong, who was jokingly looking at her. Can you still walk? He raised his eyebrows and eyes, slowly teasing Shen Mingyue. He should have a special sense of achievement by making himself like this, right? Shen Mingyue gave him a disdainful glance, went to the cabinet, took the marriage certificate to the bed, and took a photo. What are you doing? Just as he was about to send the photo to Shen Bingcheng, Yin Jingdong's voice came from beside him. I'll send the photo to my brother and let him know that I'm married, Shen Mingyue said to Yin Jingdong. Her tone of voice was not good because Yin Jingdong didn't accompany her just now to see her brother, which made Shen Mingyue unhappy. Code my photo, Yin Jingdong said calmly as he glanced at the photo. Chapter 2 I wonder what your husband does. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shen Mingyue became angry, but just as she was about to erupt, she suddenly thought to herself. I really need to make a code. When it comes to getting married, my elder brother must tell the Jiang family that with the style of the local leader of the Jiang family, we cannot completely remove Yin Jingdong. Although Yin Jingdong looks prestigious, at best, he is just a lawyer. Okay, Shen Mingyue agreed. But in her heart, she felt that Yin Jingdong was a rather irresponsible person, which was extremely inconsistent with his imposing appearance and powerful aura. She coded the photo, name, and date of birth of Yin Jingdong, as well as the front of the marriage certificate and the fake steel seal of the Civil Affairs Bureau, but took a clear picture to avoid making Shen Bingcheng think it was fake. After putting the marriage certificate back in the cabinet, Shen Mingyue thought to herself. She needs to memorize Yin Jingdong's situation, after all, he is the husband on her marriage certificate. 
If her elder brother asks, she needs to answer fluently. How old are you this year? After a while, Shen Mingyue asked Dean Jingdong. You just put down your marriage certificate, don't you know how old I am? Yin Jingdong frowned even tighter. I, I didn't look. Do you know how old I am? Shen Mingyue asked confidently. She bet that Yin Jingdong doesn't know her age either. 22, Yin Jingdong said without any discount. It's really true. Because he remembered his age and didn't remember him, Shen Mingyue felt a little guilty. So. How old are you? I don't remember. Shen Mingyue's guilt passed in a blink of an eye. She was already a man and woman who each needed, and when she was anxious, she glanced at his ID card. It's normal not to remember how old he is. 30, Yin Jingdong said. She is eight years older than her. Shen Mingyue's thoughts drifted for an instant, and she remembered that Sang Shi was also eight years older than her. Two years ago, the Shen family was in full swing, and Shen Mingyue had just turned twenty. As the eldest daughter of the Shen family, she was famous in Jiangzhou, with a charming and graceful appearance. There were many people pursuing her in Jiangzhou, but almost no one knew that she had a boyfriend. She was afraid that her parents would not agree, and her boyfriend never saw her. The Sang family also sent someone to propose marriage, but Shen Mingyue refused. Rumors have it that Sang Shi was violent, indifferent, and inhumane, moreover, there was a wife in front of him whose cause of death was unknown, and it was rumored that she died from domestic violence by him. What Shen Mingyue couldn't accept the most was that Sang Shi was eight years older than herself. At the age of eight, it was an insurmountable gap for Shen Mingyue at that time. So, she didn't even see Sang Shi's face, and in her heart, she already recognized Sang Shi as a bald and greasy Mediterranean old man. Once this impression is formed, it is difficult to change. But now it seems that the same age difference between Yin Jingdong and her is not that big. What kind of job are you doing? Shen Mingyue checked her household registration. Yin Jingdong lightly lifted Shen Mingyue's chin, squinted his eyes, and looked at Shen Mingyue with a deep, bottomless gaze. I don't know what your husband does. However, he didn't seem ready to wait for Shen Mingyue to answer this question because he got out of bed and needed to take a shower. Yin Jingdong Weian's body was naked, standing in front of Shen Mingyue, blocking all of her gaze, causing her face to blush slightly. She turned her body towards that side, but what appeared before her was still Yin Jingdong's strong and sexy figure. Yin Jingdong propped his hands on both sides of Shen Mingyue's body, pinched her chin, and jokingly said, what do I do? Guess what? After Yin Jingdong entered the bathroom, there was a loud sound of water. 360 lines, how does Shen Mingyue guess? She took out her phone and entered the words Yin Jingdong into the search engine. Except for a few with the same name, she couldn't find any information about her husband. I guess it's not well known either. Which industry leader is it? Shen Mingyue withdrew her flag and threw her phone next to her pillow. As a last resort, she sent a WeChat message to her good friend Kai Xiaoya. Kai Kai, what does Yin Jingdong do? Kai Xiaoya introduced Yin Jingdong to Shen Mingyue's best friend. She is studying abroad and has time differences. Her response time is not timely and sometimes she forgets to return. Unexpectedly, Kai Xiaoya returned quickly this time. Dot. Are you both married? You don't know what he does. He's a lawyer at Diran Law Firm. Are you two getting along well? Shen Mingyue was afraid that saying her flash marriage husband was unreliable would make Kai Xiaoya feel guilty, so she replied, it's pretty good. About 15 minutes later, Yin Jingdong came out of the restroom. He got into bed, propped up his body with one elbow, and jokingly said to Shen Mingyue next to him, I found out what your husband does. Shen Mingyue closed her eyes slightly and said slowly, I've found it. Wanted criminal, when will you go in so that I can send you bedding? I wish your husband had such a day, didn't he? You regret getting married. 
Yin Jingdong pinched her face. Although she had already been married, Shen Mingyue still had some resistance to such intimate behavior between men and women, and she leaned aside calmly. Encountering such an unreliable husband made Shen Mingyue feel regretful. After sending the marriage certificate to Shen Bingcheng, he never replied, which kept Shen Mingyue awake all night. I don't know how Big Brother will escalate this matter. The next day at 7 o'clock, she went to the kitchen in a daze to make breakfast. Yin Jingdong's other phone rang once. Shen Mingyue was unaware that Yin Jingdong had two mobile phones. It is a corporate email reminder. You have a resume to be screened, name. Shen Yu, position. Assistant to the President's life. He clicked on the email and slightly picked the corner of his mouth. Yin Jingdong went to the restaurant for a meal. So virtuous. Yin Jingdong looked at the food on the table and said to Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue was somewhat absent minded and did not respond. Her WeChat phone rang again, and she picked it up to see that it was Qin Shui's. Qin Shui is a partner of Shen Mingyue, and the two of them jointly founded a western restaurant. Mingyue, can you raise 30,000 yuan to pay the waiter's salary now? My family is always losing money at the restaurant, cutting off my living expenses, and I have no money left. I am currently in the restaurant, and the waiter won't let me leave. Qin Shui also posted a photo of herself being besieged by a waiter, who held up several pieces of paper with the words. Pay salary. Miss Qin Shui has a bad temper and usually doesn't maintain a good relationship with the waiter. At this point, the waiter will definitely fall into trouble. It's really a house leak and continuous night rain. This restaurant was run by Shen Mingyue with pocket money when she was wealthy. At that time, 500,000 yuan was a drop in the bucket for her, but now, she doesn't even have 20,000 yuan in her hands. She doesn't have the courage to contact her elder brother now, let alone ask for money from him. Those classmates who used to surround her all day have long since disappeared. It seems that the only person she can seek help from is the person in front of her Yin Jingdong was bowing his head to drink soup, holding a spoon with a very polite and refined demeanor, as if he had undergone specialized dining etiquette. His attire was also very exquisite, so he should be able to get out 30,000 yuan. Chapter 3 Sangshir Qingdian You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shen Mingyue temporarily put aside last night's prejudice against Yin Jingdong. Husband Shen Mingyue has never borrowed money from anyone since she was young, so borrowing money is too embarrassing for her. What's going on? Yin Jingdong said, his voice extremely magnetic and pleasant. Can you lend me some money? Shen Mingyue's voice was as low as a mosquito's hum. What? Yin Jingdong didn't hear and looked up at Shen Mingyue. Lend me some money. Shen Mingyue said recklessly. How much? Yin Jingdong continued to drink the soup calmly. 30,000, okay. Shen Mingyue's face had already turned red. I'm not a scammer. I definitely wouldn't take the money and leave. It's because I have an urgent matter. If you can't trust me, I can mortgage something to you, except for my ID card. Shen Mingyue said anxiously, blushing as if this was her first time seeking someone in her life. To show her sincerity, she specifically made a request for collateral. After all, apart from their relationship in bed, they don't actually know each other very well. Okay, Yin Jingdong said bluntly. Really? A smile fell on Shen Mingyue's face. Can you trust me? Believe it or not, I can't figure it out for 30,000 yuan. After speaking, Yin Jingdong wiped his mouth with a tissue and looked particularly proud. He said to Shen Mingyue, the food is done well. Shen Mingyue lowered her head and sneered, Husband, you're flattering me. Do you need me to mortgage anything? Marriage certificate, Yin Jingdong said. Shen Mingyue finally let out a deep sigh. She thought he was going to take something amazing, it turned out to be a marriage certificate. Anyway, she has already taken photos for her elder brother. 
Yin Jingdong can take them away. Shen Mingyue easily agreed to Yin Jingdong and went back to the bedroom, giving him both marriage certificates. Can I transfer your WeChat or bank card? Yin Jingdong collected his marriage certificate. Oh, I borrowed money to pay the restaurant staff. You can just transfer it directly to my friend, and I'll push her WeChat to you. Shen Mingyue stood up hastily, trying to pass Qin Shui's business card to Yin Jingdong. Shen Mingyue once talked to Yin Jingdong about having a restaurant, but he didn't say that the business was so poor. No need, I'll transfer it to you directly. After saying that, Yin Jingdong didn't add Qin Shui's WeChat and directly transferred the money to Shen Mingyue's WeChat before leaving. After Shen Mingyue transferred the money to Qin Shui, Qin Shui said, Mingyue, my crisis has been resolved, and I have temporarily closed the restaurant. Let's see if anyone sublets it. We are so miserable. Wu Wu. Shen Mingyue was left alone, washing dishes and thinking about her own affairs. The most important thing now is to find a job to support herself. The Shen family went bankrupt, owed a huge debt, and the restaurant only paid without making any profit. Moreover, she just owed 30,000 yuan in debt. Drying her hands and returning to the computer to look for a job, she found out that there were too many exams now and she often required a graduate degree or above. However, due to the bankruptcy of the Shen family, she returned to China early and did not obtain her undergraduate certificate in business administration, which means she only graduated from high school. It's hard to get a job. After submitting her resume online for a whole day, when Yin Jingdong returned at 5.30 p.m., her eyes turned red. Are you crying? Yin Jingdong gently pressed his hand on Shen Mingyue's head and lifted her head. Shen Mingyue passively looked up at Yin Jingdong, her eyes innocent and puzzled. No, I've been posting my resume online for a whole day. Maybe I'm tired from looking at the computer. It's really hard to find a job now. I'll go cook, she said when Shen Mingyue brought a few dishes with all the colors, flavors, and flavors to the table, she suddenly remembered something and asked Yin Jingdong, husband, do your law firm hire assistants? Shen Mingyue felt that having submitted so many resumes today was basically futile. The positions she applied for were mostly for undergraduate or graduate students, and people wouldn't even look at her resumes. Most of the jobs that only required a high school education were technical jobs, and she couldn't do them either. Zhao Yin Jingdong seems to love eating the food made by Shen Mingyue, and he eats it very well. Is it okay for you to look at me? Shen Mingyue looked at Yin Jingdong with expectant eyes, I've been in third grade for my undergraduate studies, but unfortunately, something happened at home and I didn't get my graduation certificate. How about I be your assistant? I'm not afraid of hardship or fatigue, and I'll work hard. Do you have a legal professional qualification certificate? He raised his eyes and asked Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue shook her head in despair. Unlike Shen Mingyue's eager and eager to try, it seems that Yin Jingdong knew from the beginning that Shen Mingyue couldn't do it at all. Or maybe he doesn't want her to do it. Shen Mingyue lowered her flag and stopped beating her drums, feeling quite disappointed. She felt that it must be because Yin Jingdong didn't want to help, and many of them who worked as assistants didn't have professional qualifications. Is he afraid that after she goes to the company, she will get in his way? Don't worry, if I go to your law firm, I will definitely not reveal our relationship. You can look at whoever you like, and I don't care who you want to be good with. Be an honest worker, Shen Mingyue said urgently. After all, if nothing unexpected happens, Yin Jingdong is the only straw she can catch. I saw Yin Jingdong frowning slightly, his eyes fixed on Shen Mingyue, and he was so scared that Shen Mingyue was covered in hair. What? What's going on? Shen Mingyue asked somewhat puzzled, if you don't go, then don't you? I don't have to go either. After speaking, Shen Mingyue returned to her bedroom and continued to submit her resume with a casual tone. I don't know when Yin Jingdong entered the bedroom, but as soon as he entered, he turned off the computer for Shen Mingyue. Don't sleep, he said to Shen Mingyue. 
but I can't find a job, there's a big stone blocking my heart. Shen Mingyue was somewhat anxious. Don't look for it, maybe the job will fall from the sky, Yin Jingdong said calmly. Shen Mingyue sneered, that wouldn't hit me in the head either. I haven't had such good luck since I was born. Maybe from today on, there will be. After speaking, Yin Jingdong pulled Shen Mingyue's hand. In an instant, Shen Mingyue's fingers became warm and warm, like an electric current, piercing into her heart. Coincidentally, Shen Mingyue was also tired. She took off her glasses, rubbed her eyes, and after taking a shower and going to bed, her phone rang. It's big brother Shen Bingqing again. At this moment, Shen Mingyue really wants to receive a call from Shen Bingqing to see his opinion on her marriage. Mingyue, come to work at Sangshir Group tomorrow. Shen Mingyue opened her mouth wide, unable to believe it. Is it true that, as Yin Jingdong said, work has fallen from the sky? But this is not a job, it's a thunder. I'm not even prepared, nor did I have an interview, Shen Mingyue said with great resistance, and she even glanced at Yin Jingdong. He was sitting in front of the desk, looking through the case file as if there was no one around. Shen Mingyue saw his broad shoulders and extremely straight back and thought to herself, does he have foresight? No need to prepare, no need to interview. I am applying for Sangshir's life assistant for you. You are the only one who submitted a resume for this job, and you have been exceptionally admitted. Shen Bingqing said, Sangshir approved it. Ah! Shen Mingyue exclaimed in surprise. Chapter 4 His WeChat request has arrived. You are listening at NovelFull.audio how could Sangshir appoint someone who had a previous relationship with him as his secretary? What? Come to work dressed up tomorrow. Shen Bingcheng said sternly Shen Mingyue never thought about this issue at all. The salary for ordering meals is only 10,000 yuan per month, and even if she finds another job, starting from the bottom, she will eventually be able to earn over 10,000 yuan per month. But big brother, that person from Sangshir. Isn't that embarrassing to me? He has a bad temper and a bad personality, and I guess he's still an old bald donkey. If he goes, he won't mess with me to death. I even withdrew from his marriage, so he definitely won't spare me. Aren't you making me walk around and lose face? Shen Mingyue felt uncomfortable as she thought of going to work as a life assistant for Sangshir. Yin Jingdong, who was sitting at the desk reading materials, frowned slightly. I told you before, the name of the resume I submitted to you was Shen Yu, and there was no photo of you on the resume, Shen Bingqing said. Shen Mingyue's eyebrows tightened even tighter. Big brother, you didn't write my real name. Not only do I have to be nervous when I work, but I also have to constantly worry about him recognizing me. Sang Shi is such a scumbag. If he recognizes me, he will beat me up in front of the whole company. The face you want to gain in front of the Jiang family will be shattered and I can't even put it together. Big brother, what have you done? I won't go. Shen Mingyue, think about dad's white hair and stroke in bed. After saying that, Shen Bingqing hung up the phone. Shen Yu was so angry that tears were swirling in her eyes. She asked Yin Jingdong for the last time, does your law firm really hire people or not? She has become so pitiful that even Yin Jingdong doesn't pity her. No move. Yin Jingdong turned his head and said, Have you scolded enough? His eyebrows seemed to be shrouded in unhappiness. Shen Mingyue hugged her legs with both hands and sat on the bed, not experiencing Yin Jingdong's emotions too much. When I scolded Sang, I didn't scold you. Shen Mingyue was a bit unhappy, didn't Yin Jingdong manage too much? Yin Jingdong was already lying next to her. He pressed Shen Mingyue under his body and passionately kissed her. Today, Yin Jingdong seemed to be venting his anger on her, making Shen Mingyue unable to catch her breath. Shen Mingyue had no mood at all and occasionally pushed Yin Jingdong's chest. In Yin Jingdong's eyes, it was a shy state of half pushing and half giving, and his movements became even heavier. Shen Mingyue was in pain and tears welled up. 
Originally, she had suffered injustice at Shen Bingqing's place today. As her husband, Yin Jingdong not only didn't comfort her, but also cruelly harassed her in bed. Shen Mingyue didn't even have a chance to vent her grievances, and she felt resentful in her heart. After finishing, she turned around and ignored him. Think about it, she and Yin Jingdong were originally arranged to get married, why should they understand her emotions? Shen Mingyue stayed up all night and woke up early the next morning, feeling sore all over. She stood in front of the mirror, looking back and forth at the red marks on her neck. Yin Jingdong was sitting in front of the coffee table smoking. He looked at Shen Mingyue's firm gaze and her face, which was as if she were dying. He pressed the cigarette but out of the ashtray and said slowly, Do you want Sang Shi to see this? Almost, I want to show my older brother that I'm married and dispel the idea of marrying Jiang Ze. There's no need to show off in front of Jiang Ze. I naturally don't have to do that job at Sang Shi. Today, let Sang Shi resign from me, Shen Mingyue said confidently, looking up. Unless he gives me an annual salary of 300,000, do you think? He might give you a higher chance, Yin Jingdong said, looking down. He seemed to find it quite interesting and deliberately made fun of Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue looked at him coldly, feeling that he was indeed a cheap husband and couldn't empathize with herself. She was already burning her eyebrows, and he was still watching the show. Shen Mingyue has decided that if she doesn't go, Big Brother will definitely not let her go, she fulfilled her elder brother's wish, went to report, and then went to Sangshir's office to tell him that she was Shen Mingyue, who had refused his marriage back then. Presumably, he knew that he was Shen Mingyue, and using it also made him responsive. At that time, it's impossible for Big Brother to let Shen Mingyue join the Sangshir group again. As for an annual salary of 300,000 yuan, Shen Mingyue knew it was absolutely impossible. She went to the personnel department to find her elder brother. Big brother, I'm really married. Didn't you see the marriage certificate I sent you? Shen Mingyue said, struggling in her final moments. Shen Bingcheng seemed to be completely indifferent, now AI can do anything. Mingyue, don't think what you're thinking, I don't know. Shen Mingyue deliberately looked up and showed the red mark on her neck to Shen Bingcheng. What's wrong? Did you get angry and pull yourself out? Shen Bingqing knew that this younger sister was always cautious. Shen Mingyue was extremely angry, but her marriage certificate was taken away by Yin Jingdong as collateral without any physical evidence. Shen Mingyue could only verbally say, My husband's name is Yin Jingdong, he is 30 years old and a lawyer at Dirun Law Firm. 30. Shen Bingqing sneered at Shen Mingyue's words. Mingyue, you probably forgot that Sangshir is also 30 years old this year, right? At that time, you mocked him from behind as a middle-aged greasy man with a bald head and a big belly. Why, now your vision has changed and you have voluntarily married a middle-aged greasy man. Shen Bingqing further confirmed that Shen Mingyue was lying. I don't have it. Shen Mingyue's face turned slightly red. Age was not her main reason for rejecting Sang Shi, but most importantly, her character. Moreover, at that time, she had just turned twenty and was full of energy. How could she consider a man who was almost thirty years old? Moreover, she was like glue to her boyfriend at the time, who was only three years older than her. Regardless of whether it's there or not, hurry up and go to the secretariat to work, Shen Bingqing said. I have already reported it to you in the personnel department. Shen Mingyue knew she couldn't avoid it and asked Shen Bingcheng about the position of the secretariat. She went to take on the job. There are already four or five secretaries in the secretariat, with different responsibilities. Seeing Shen Mingyue sitting in the position of life secretary, everyone's eyes turned to this side. The position of CEO's life secretary sounds good, but to put it simply, the main job is to order meals for Sangshir and do odd jobs. Previously, Sangshir resigned five or six life secretaries, making this position a hot potato. Now, everyone wants to know who fearlessly obtained the position of life secretary. 
Shen Mingyue thought for a moment and realized that she had already reported to the secretariat. She was going to the CEO's office and asked what Sangshir had for lunch. She revealed her identity to Sangshir, and Sangshir would definitely resign without saying a word. After thinking so, she stood up from the chair with a sense of death and righteousness, and even tidied up her clothes. The whole secretariat was staring at her, looking at what the new life secretary was up to. Thinking of facing Sangshir, Shen Mingyue's heart instantly became tense. But just as she was about to take a step forward, her phone WeChat rang. She picked it up and took a look, it was a friend request. The request has only two words. Sangshir. Do you want to test how long you have been fired in Chapter 5? You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Shen Mingyue's mind was instantly at a loss, unsure whether to pass or refuse. After some thought, she still passed and saw what kind of trick Sangshir had. Sangshir. Shen Yu Shen Mingyue. What's up? She is still editing WeChat. I am Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue, who refused your marriage back then, why? Shen Mingyue was a bit frustrated with everything she did. She just wanted Sangshir to know her true face. She wasn't afraid that Sangshir would have a worse impression of her, and she didn't want to do this job anyway. Life assistant, annual salary of 500,000 yuan. There is room for improvement, said Sangshir. Annual salary of 500,000. Previously, 500,000 yuan was nothing to Shen Mingyue, but now, 500,000 yuan is a huge sum of money. As an uneducated person, she can at most find a job with an annual salary of 100,000 yuan. 500,000 yuan can solve many urgent problems, such as going to the hospital to see her father, paying off debts, and having money, her brother no longer needs to force her to marry Jiang Ze. Shen Mingyue regained her senses from the stirring emotions and quickly deleted the edited, broken jar, WeChat. Then, trembling her fingers, she sent a WeChat message to Sangshir. May I ask Sang, where is the room for improvement? She always thought that being a food ordering person was an extremely hopeless job, and anyone could do it as long as they had a food ordering software. Personal assistant, annual salary of 1 million, senior assistant, annual salary of 1.5 million, dividends calculated separately. Shen Mingyue coughed softly and became serious, so. So tempting. Shen Mingyue bent down for 500,000 yuan and slowly sat on the chair. With such good conditions, who can't afford to pay? Face is important, but now, money is even more important. She originally wanted to let Sangshir know who she was, but now she was afraid that Sangshir would know she had opened her. This job with an annual salary of 500,000 yuan requires her to put in a lot of effort and be careful. When she reaches an annual salary of 1.5 million yuan, her older brother won't force her to marry anyone, will he? Okay, Mr. Sang, I will work hard and never disappoint your expectations. What would you like to eat for lunch? Chinese food. Western food. Shen Mingyue's tone changed instantly. Chinese food, steamed buns. The money for ordering meals is reimbursed by the finance department at the end of each month, said Sangshir. Shen Mingyue thinks. Sangshir's lifestyle is really down to earth, and he doesn't know what Michelin 3. Star 3. Star food is, but he likes steamed buns, okay, Mr. Sang. Do you prefer meat filling or vegetarian filling? Shen Mingyue said cautiously. Su. Shen Mingyue knew that he didn't want to talk much through Sangshir's simple word, plain, so she didn't bother him. She began to read the ordering software, and then she ordered a drawer of plain steamed buns and a bowl of corn kanji for him. Before making the payment, she took a screenshot of Sangshir and asked if these were okay. After a moment, Sangshir replied to WeChat. Do you want to test how long you have been activated? Shen Mingyue frowned slightly, her hair standing up. She was highly nervous and thought to herself, where did she go wrong? Also, why is Sangshir speaking so straightforwardly? Who can't stand vomiting blood after listening? 
Now it seems that even the annual salary of 1.5 million is difficult to maintain, and she needs to pin her head on her waistband and keep her mind clear at all times. Shen Mingyue felt a bit discouraged, as if what Sang Shi had just said was, drawing a big cake, to serve him well. Mr. Sang, I don't know where I made a mistake. I don't quite understand your appetite, said Shen Mingyue patiently for money. Did you not do your homework in advance? Shen Mingyue bit her lip, making her teeth itch with hatred. However, good employees never complain about the environment, only solve problems. She sent a WeChat message to Shen Bingcheng, inquiring about Sang Shi's preferences. Not long after, Shen Bingcheng sent her a Word document, which was full of Sang Shi's preferences, as well as the names of Michelin restaurants and five-dot-star hotels that Sang often went to, a whole ten pages long there are so many problems that it's disgusting. Shen Bingcheng also said, this document was requested by me from a life assistant who was fired for mistakenly ordering a loofah soup he didn't like. In addition, if he works overtime in the afternoon, you will have to follow him to order meals. You need to pay attention to his WeChat and reply promptly. One assistant was fired because he replied five minutes late. Shen Mingyue finished reading with her heart in her hand and thought to herself. Indeed, she is a blood-sucking capitalist. The document says. Sangshir likes to eat fish, likes jellyfish skin, likes refreshing cold dishes, and likes to eat Su Ji's vegetarian stuffed buns. He seems to love down dot to dot earth home cooked dishes. Finally, Shen Mingyue ordered steamed stuffed buns filled with mushroom and fungus. In addition, he ordered a fish, a vegetable dish, a cold jellyfish skin, and a bowl of corn congee. She sent a screenshot of Sang Shi again. Sang Shi Hui. Who told you that I love kanji? Shen Mingyue felt like her hair was going to be pulled bald, and she couldn't continue drying in the next second. She removed the kanji and sent it to Sang Shi again. This time, Sang Shi finally replied with an okay gesture. Shen Mingyue finally let out a deep sigh. It wasn't until he saw that the ordering software displayed sign 4, and Sang Shi didn't continue to trouble Shen Mingyue, that Shen Mingyue's tense spirit finally relaxed. Throughout the afternoon, Shen Mingyue stared closely at her phone like Sheriff Black Cat. Fortunately, Sang Shi's WeChat did not send it again. Finally, I didn't continue to nitpick. At 4 o'clock, Shen Mingyue received a WeChat message from Shen Bingcheng. Mingyue, your sister dot in dot law and I have arranged to meet Jiang Zhe this afternoon. Suddenly, Shen Mingyue's backbone was lifted up again. She gave screenshots of Sang Shi and her WeChat account to Shen Bingcheng. Big brother, look at how severe my situation is. The good job you found for me, even with a lantern on, I can't even find it. I'm not sure if I can keep it. If I can't keep it, then you're deceiving Jiang Zhe. If I can keep it, will I still need to find a golden turtle son dot in dot law for such a high annual salary in the future? Besides, I'm already married. Shen Mingyue has been emphasizing to Shen Bingcheng that she is married, but Shen Bingcheng simply doesn't believe it, which makes Shen Mingyue a bit crazy. In the afternoon, come to the HR department to see me and let's go together. Shen Bingcheng ignored Shen Mingyue's argument and left this sentence. Shen Mingyue. She was a bit speechless and decided to go to the HR department after work to clarify with Shen Bingcheng. Until the end of the workday, there was no movement on Sang Shi's side. Shen Mingyue finally packed her things with peace of mind and wanted to go to the Human Resources Department to find Shen Bingcheng. Take the elevator down to the 28th floor where the HR department is located. As soon as Shen Mingyue got out of the elevator, she heard someone say, Mr. Sang, should we go straight home or go back to the office? Upon hearing this, Shen Mingyue's heart immediately lifted. On the side of the elevator is the finance department, and the voice of the speaker appeared at the entrance of the finance department. If you guessed correctly, at this time, Sang Shi was walking out of the finance department, whether he was going home or back to the office, he had to come and take the elevator. This positive encounter is inevitable. Shen Mingyue suddenly looked like an ant on a hot pot. In a moment of urgency, 
she turned around. Coincidentally, I received a WeChat message from Yin Jingdong on my phone. She looked fake, but in fact, what Yin Jingdong had written didn't enter her mind because she knew that at this moment, the group of people from Sangshir were walking towards the elevator. Although Sangshir had never seen what Shen Mingyue looked like, standing here was too conspicuous. Just then, the phone slipped from Shen Mingyue's trembling hand and fell to the ground. Chapter 6 Blaming the boss during the day and blaming the husband at night. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shen Mingyue quickly bent over to pick it up. As long as there is something to do, she doesn't need to specifically turn back to meet Sangshir. She crouched down and looked diagonally back, seeing a pair of dark brown leather shoes and dark gray trousers above them. Shen Mingyue guessed that the owner of these leather shoes is Sangshir because the leather shoes are handmade Italian and unique in the world. This pair of leather shoes is vastly different from the assembly line leather shoes of the group following behind. Just as Shen Mingyue was worried that someone might ask, who is she? Why is she squatting here and not turning around when she sees Sang? Sang Shi and his group entered the elevator. At this moment, Shen Mingyue finally relaxed and almost collapsed on the ground. I originally wanted to reply to Yin Jingdong's WeChat, but she found that her phone was black screen. She just glanced at her phone, and Yin Jingdong seemed to say he was coming to pick her up. Since everyone else has arrived, wouldn't Shen Mingyue just pull him up to meet Big Brother? With this in mind, Shen Mingyue took another elevator and went to the underground garage. In a corner, she found Yin Jingdong's Audi. After sitting in the passenger seat, she leaned her head against the seat and panicked, patting her chest. Have you met Prince Yen? Yin Jingdong saw Shen Mingyue's expression and asked her. Even more terrifying than Yen Wangye, it was when the ghost saw Sang Shi, who was worried, had a violent personality, was stingy, and tortured people beyond their means. He almost let him see me, but it scared me to death. Shen Mingyue's pupils widened, and her mind was still replaying Sang Shi's handmade custom leather shoes. Oh, is he so scary? Yin Jingdong didn't seem to take Shen Mingyue's words to heart. He lightly tapped the steering wheel with his right hand and said. Of course, Shen Mingyue was a little dissatisfied with Yin Jingdong's lack of corresponding shock. I'm not exaggerating. If he knew that I was the one who ordered his meal, he would probably have killed me. I'm the one who caused him to lose face in Jiangzhou. He's a person who knows everything and buries me on the spot, and the police can't do anything about him. Yin Jingdong tightly closed his lips and started the car, ready to leave. Shen Mingyue originally planned to take Yin Jingdong to meet Shen Bingcheng, but now her phone has broken, giving her an excuse not to contact Shen Bingcheng and saving her the chance to meet Jiang Ze, the second-generation ancestor. Why didn't I reply to my WeChat message? Yin Jingdong asked Shen Mingyue as the car drove out of the garage. I was so scared by Sang Shi that my phone fell to the ground and the screen went black, Shen Mingyue said angrily. Do you think Sang Shi, this arrogant capitalist, has to compensate me with a new phone? Is he seriously ill? Why should he go to the finance department if he has nothing to do? Shen Mingyue knew that she was being unreasonable, but she just wanted to speak up in pain. Do you dare to say that in front of him? Yin Jingdong casually turned the steering wheel and the car turned around. So. What's there to be afraid of? Shen Mingyue looked up arrogantly and said defiantly, I'll curse him to death tomorrow. Are you going to curse him to death at night? Yin Jingdong said in a lively tone. At night. Shen Mingyue thought of Yin Jingdong's wildness in bed at night and felt even angrier. She was also a bit shy, so she turned her head out of the window and lowered her voice by half. At night, I scolded you to death. What are you scolding me for? Yin Jingdong said with a smile on his lips. Shen Mingyue lightly grabbed her dress with her hand, and she murmured softly, What are you cursing at? Don't you have any thoughts? Yin Jingdong leaned his left elbow against the window glass, caressing his chin. 
He smiled awkwardly and said, you're busy scolding the boss during the day and your husband at night. Shen Mingyue ignored him. Subsequently, Shen Mingyue discovered that Yin Jingdong was not on his way home. Why don't you go home? Where are you going? Shen Mingyue frowned slightly and asked Yin Jingdong. Go buy you a mobile phone, so you won't scold me to death, Yin Jingdong said. I scolded Sangshir. You're not him. It's the same. Yin Jingdong turned the steering wheel and the car stopped at the entrance of the Apple store on the roadside. After the car stalled, Shen Mingyue suddenly remembered something. She asked Yin Jingdong suspiciously, Are you going to buy me a phone? Don't buy it. Shen Mingyue blinked her eyes and said, Then this money. Although her annual salary is 500,000 yuan, she hasn't received any of this money yet. Whether she can receive it or not is another matter. She already owes Yin Jingdong 30,000 yuan, and if she spends another 10,000 yuan to buy a phone, the debt will continue to increase. You don't need to pay it back, Yin Jingdong said as he leaned over to Shen Mingyue and whispered in her ear, I'll pay it back tonight. Shen Mingyue's face turned red as soon as she brushed it. Why did she return it at night? Who doesn't know? Isn't it embarrassing for him to say such things in broad daylight? However, she pretended not to understand and said, Well, I'll make you something delicious tonight. My brown sugar rice cake is made very well, and no one in the whole Jiangzhou can catch up with me. I'll make it for you to eat tonight. Seeing Shen Mingyue's curved eyes smiling, Yin Jingdong knew she was pretending to be confused while trying to understand. Yin Jingdong said hesitantly, Really? How delicious. His body was getting closer and closer to Shen Mingyue, and the heat emanating from him made Shen Mingyue blush and heartbeat. Shen Mingyue was too imposing to take a breath and sat upright. She swallowed her saliva and said, It's delicious. I'll have a good taste tonight, Yin Jingdong said with his lips close to Shen Mingyue's ear, holding her earlobe. He stirred up the little deer in Shen Mingyue's heart. Yin Jingdong finally left Shen Mingyue's side and got off the car. Shen Mingyue's whole body was hot and dry, and her face was even hotter. She sat there and forgot to get off the car. Yin Jingdong turned his head and said to her in the car, Aren't you leaving yet? His magnetic voice penetrated through the car window and entered Shen Mingyue's ears. Shen Mingyue nodded, opened the car door, and got off. Before catching up with Yin Jingdong's pace, her eyes instinctively glanced at his feet, which were a pair of black leather shoes. Although they were expensive and high dot end, they were definitely not handmade custom dot made. Entering the store, without a word, Yin Jingdong picked out the latest model of phone for Shen Mingyue. It's too expensive. Just an average one will do. Shen Mingyue didn't want to owe him too much. Yin Jingdong didn't listen to Shen Mingyue. He asked Shen Mingyue to take out the old phone card and had the staff put the new phone in. Have you learned how to cook before? Yin Jingdong said casually on the way back. Shen Mingyue was tinkering with her new phone, exploring new app features and taking selfies. She casually responded, Hmm, before studying abroad, I went to a cooking school specifically for three months. I usually know how to cook and it's done quite well. I've loved cooking since I was young, and it's why I started a restaurant with Qin Shui. Yin Jingdong didn't continue speaking. After arriving home, Shen Mingyue prepared the ingredients and was about to cook brown sugar glutinous rice cake when her phone rang. It's Shen Bingqing again. Shen Mingyue's scalp instinctively tingled. She washed her hands and connected to Shen Bingqing's video. Shen Mingyue, what's wrong with you? I asked you to go to the HR department to find me. Not only did you not go, but you also turned off your phone. Are you crazy? Do you know that Jiang Zidwa is angry tonight? I called you more than twenty times, and you turned off all of them. Shen Bingqing roared like a bolt of fire. Is Yin Jingdong the same as Sangshir in Chapter 7? You are listening at novelfull.audio.
It wasn't until Shen Bingcheng ignited all the fire that Shen Mingyue caught the opportunity to speak. Big brother, I went to see you, but my phone broke and I didn't receive your call. It was my husband who picked me up and bought me a new phone. He treated me so well. Shen Mingyue observed Shen Bingcheng's side, wanting to see if Jiang Yun was by his side. She wanted her elder brother to see Yin Jingdong, but if the people of the Jiang family saw Yin Jingdong's true face, they would cause trouble for him. Don't be the husband on the left, the husband on the right. Shen Bingcheng's anger lingered, it's just like the real thing. It's true. Shen Mingyue said. Coincidentally, Shen Mingyue saw Yin Jingdong pouring water into the living room in the kitchen. He looks handsome and sexy with his back on his back, wide shoulders and narrow waist, straight and upright, facing the wind like a jade tree. She quickly turned the camera of her phone to take a picture of Yin Jingdong's back, then immediately turned the video back to take a look at herself, only letting her older brother take a glance at Yin Jingdong. You see, big brother. This is my husband, this is his family. I'm telling you you don't believe it. Shen Mingyue said slightly smugly, is his figure pretty good? Shen Mingyue. If this matter is true, I see how you can explain it to your father. Shen Bingcheng realized at this moment that the matter didn't seem to be fake. You can find anyone to marry, can he be helpful to the Shen family? Jiang Ze has been interested in you for several years, and he can let you go. Shen Mingyue bit her lip and remained silent. So even if you marry Jiang Yun, it won't help the Shen family. How can you be sure that marrying her brother will be helpful to the Shen family? Shen Mingyue raised her voice. Yin Jingdong heard the commotion in the kitchen and turned his head, holding a water glass. Just now, the range hood in the kitchen was ringing, and the living room was quite far from the kitchen. He didn't notice Shen Mingyue talking. Yin Jingdong saw Shen Mingyue holding her phone, as if she was video chatting with someone. He furrowed his brow slightly. After Shen Mingyue finished saying that sentence just now, Pa, Shen Bingqing cut off the video. Shen Mingyue knew that she had mentioned his pain points. Who were you video with just now? Yin Jingdong asked Shen Mingyue in the kitchen, whose eyelids were drooping and her face had a sullen expression. My big brother, Shen Mingyue said angrily. Did he see me? Yin Jingdong seemed to be very concerned about this matter. Hmm. Shen Mingyue had some ups and downs. Why didn't you tell me in advance? Yin Jingdong said coldly, with a clear reprimand. That tone was like a superior questioning a subordinate who made a mistake. Perhaps his icy aura was too strong, making Shen Mingyue tremble all over. Isn't it just about dealing with the family when I get married to you? I thought you agreed, so I let my older brother see you and let him know that I'm in a man's house, and I'm really married. Shen Mingyue's tone was clearly not good, and she wanted to explain that her older brother only saw his back, but now she's lost in thought. It's still because you're a wanted criminal, afraid others will see your true face in Lushan. If you try to shift the blame, then divorce will be fine. After speaking, Shen Mingyue took off her apron and threw it onto the sorting table, meaning. No more service. She entered the bedroom, changed into a nightgown, and lay on the bed feeling suffocated. Her phone rang again, and it took her two minutes to pick it up. After seeing the sender, her hair stood up. It was sent by Sangshir. Surprisingly, it's Sangshir. Sangshir searched for her in the middle of the night. She said her left eyelid kept bouncing tonight, come out here. Scared, Shen Mingyue stood up from the bed and looked very serious at Sangshir's WeChat. Bring me brown sugar rice cake tomorrow morning, don't add too many additives Shen Mingyue was so scared that her face turned white and her hair stood upright. Sangshir installed a camera in her house. Do you know she's making a brown sugar cake rake? Or? Is it just a coincidence? How could it happen to synthesize like this? Shen Mingyue explored the bedroom while stepping on a chair, but did not find any cameras. She opened the door and went to the kitchen, which had no monitoring equipment. 
Passing through the living room from the kitchen to the bedroom, she looked at In Jing Dong with a skeptical gaze. He was sitting against the armrest of the sofa, with one leg resting on the other and the other hand caressing his chin. What are you looking for? he asked as he saw Shen Mingyue wandering around the house. Shen Mingyue didn't answer. She raised her phone and said, Do you know Sang Shi? I've heard of it. Do you have his contact information? Shen Mingyue asked suspiciously again. Yin Zhengdong's lips curled up and his fingers lightly tapped on the armrest of the sofa. No, you want to introduce me. Shen Mingyue frowned tightly and bit her lips lightly. Just now, a thought came to her mind. Did Yin Zhengdong tell Sang Shi about the process of their argument when he met Sang? Sang Shi came specifically to avenge Yin Zhengdong. Now it looks like it's not. It seems that Yin Zhengdong really doesn't know Sang Shi. Moreover, Shen Mingyue also thought about a possibility. Is Yin Zhengdong the same as Sang Shi? When she could register, she glanced at his ID card and household registration book, and he was indeed named Yin Zhengdong, so he shouldn't have cheated. So, this possibility is very unlikely, or in other words, not at all. That can only be a coincidence. But this is too coincidental, making Shen Mingyue feel uneasy. She stood in the living room and sent a WeChat message to Sang Shi, and her attitude immediately changed. Okay, received, Mr. Sang. Tomorrow, we will put the brown sugar cake rake into your office in advance. After sending WeChat, Shen Mingyue thought again. There are already few places to buy brown sugar glutinous rice cakes in the morning. Generally, restaurants do not open in the morning, let alone when there are many problems with mulberry leaves, and don't have too many additives. It's really a nitpicking neurosis. For a moment, various emotions surged in Shen Mingyue's heart. How about? How about making the ingredients prepared tonight for sanctuary? Anyway, she won't add any additives. Yin Jingdong looked at Shen Mingyue standing in the living room, her long hair draped over her shoulders, her silk nightgown swaying gracefully, and the reflection of the light. Her graceful figure was faintly visible, evoking imagination. Yin Zhengdong's Adam's apple rolled a few times. Shen Mingyue entered the kitchen and put on an apron to make brown sugar rice cakes. She had already prepared the ingredients and started boiling the oil. Soon, the brown sugar glutinous rice cake was out of the pot. She packed the plate, let it cool, and prepared to put it in the lunchbox and refrigerator for a while. When packing the lunchbox, Shen Mingyue thought to herself, this is not takeout, she made it herself. Tomorrow, she will arrive early in the morning at Sangshir's office and put down the things. It's not that Sangshir knows it's something she made herself, but that she's afraid of meeting Sangshir face dot to dot face. According to the person in the secretary's office, Sangshir usually arrives at the office at 8.45, and she has to put the things in Sangshir's office at 8.00. After finishing all of this, Shen Mingyue was preparing to return to the bedroom. As she passed by the living room, she suddenly remembered something and said to Yin Jingdong, who was still sitting on the sofa, I made brown sugar cake for someone else. Don't move it. If you buy me a phone, it seems like I have to repay it in another way. I'll just give you 10,000 yuan. I don't need the money anymore. For whom? Yin Jingdong asked Shen Mingyue with a probing tone. Chapter 8 Mediterranean You are listening at NovelFull.audio Shen Mingyue lowered her eyelashes slightly, squinted her eyes, and said, Sangshir. Your boss. Yin Jingdong asked her. Who else is there besides him? After speaking, Shen Mingyue went back to her room to sleep. She plans to go to bed and wake up early, so that she can take a break tomorrow and sneak into Sangshir's office. When Yin Jingdong went to bed, Shen Mingyue was already about to fall asleep in a daze. With a kiss from him, Shen Mingyue woke up. She was very irritable, and it was not easy to fall asleep again. She scratched and tore at Yin Jingdong very dispassionately. Suddenly, she felt some warmth in her fingernail crevices, 
and Yin Jingdong's movement stopped. Shen Mingyue opened her eyes and saw five clear blood marks on Yin Jingdong's right face her mind suddenly became agitated and she apologetically said, Yes. I'm sorry, but if you want to do it, tell me before you do it. Couple, at least you need to seek my opinion, right? Although apologetic, there was a hint of mockery towards Yin Jingdong in her tone, accusing him of ignoring him. So, Mrs. Yin, are you doing it? Yin Jingdong only felt a burning pain on his face, but he could bear the pain. I'm going to the company early tomorrow to deliver food to the boss. Is tomorrow night okay? I'll take the initiative to take a shower and wait for you on the bed. Shen Mingyue grabbed Yin Jingdong's neck and said in a gentle voice. Who knows that Shen Mingyue has adopted a strategy of delaying the war. Her chest has been swollen to death these days, and her period has always been regular. If nothing unexpected happens, it should be tomorrow. She also took the initiative to show weakness and kissed Yin Jingdong's lips. Didn't you play tricks on me? Yin Jingdong put the broken hair in front of Shen Mingyue's forehead behind his ear, revealing her smooth forehead. Shen Mingyue became a bit unhappy and said, Husband, what are you saying? Who's playing tricks? I'm ignoring you. After speaking, Shen Mingyue pretended to be angry and turned to one side. It is estimated that Yin Jingdong did not know that he had already broken his appearance. If he knew that his handsome face, like a heavenly god, had five blood marks on it, he would not know how to teach Shen Mingyue a lesson. Shen Mingyue once again fell asleep. Because she slept early, Shen Mingyue woke up at six o'clock the next day, while Yin Jingdong was still sleeping. She tiptoed to the kitchen, made some breakfast, brought brown sugar rice cakes, and took the bus to the company. When I arrived at the CEO's office, it was 7.59 and the cleaning lady had just arrived for work. Shen Mingyue asked the cleaning lady to open the door of Songshir's office, put the lunch box on the desk, and slipped out. As soon as she left the office door, she saw someone walking over from afar in the hallway. With a short and chubby figure and a Mediterranean hairstyle, Shen Mingyue's heart immediately rose to her throat. At some point, Shen Mingyue developed a deep dot rooted image of Sangshir, who was short and chubby, with a Mediterranean and a big belly. As a result, she felt that the person walking by was Sangshir. She quickly walked in the opposite direction and got onto the elevator over there. After getting on the elevator, she finally patted her chest, feeling panicked and uncertain. At 11 o'clock, Shen Mingyue began to anxiously look at her phone, waiting for the news of Sangshir's ordering. The news from Sangshir did not come, and she was restless, when the news comes, she will be even more tormented by his nitpicking. In short, this job is not done by humans. He didn't give any feedback on the morning glutinous rice cake, and there was no news at noon. What does this mean? Should Shen Mingyue be left to reflect on herself? Shen Mingyue's brain CPU is about to burn out. Just then, another secretary from the office came in and casually said, Mr. Sang didn't work today. Not working. The other secretaries were quite surprised, I didn't mention it in advance. Shen Mingyue suddenly asked, since he doesn't come, then I don't need to order lunch for him, do I? You'd better ask him in person, and he said if it's not necessary, then it's not necessary. Otherwise, if you haven't made a decision, he'll come this afternoon and get angry again. The boss's anger has no reason, said Zhu Jia from the secretariat. Shen Mingyue thought to herself. Indeed. Instead of feeling anxious here, she might as well seek a solution from Sangshir, to die early and take care of herself. Whenever Sangshir sends a WeChat message, her scalp feels numb. After speaking for a long time, she finally sent out the message. Mr. Sang, do you want to order lunch? No need. I won't go to the office today. The brown sugar glutinous rice cake I personally made for you in the morning was left in your office. Have you eaten it? Shen Mingyue asked again. Did you do it yourself, MMM? The ingredients are good, without any additives, green and healthy. Shen Mingyue timely praised herself. 
she estimated that Sang Shi had never eaten brown sugar rice cake at all, and that it was enough to eat today. Why didn't Shen Mingyue try to praise herself? This increases the chances of winning by earning an annual salary of 500,000. Really? I'll go to the company this afternoon to get it back. Shen Mingyue never expected that Sang Shi would even come to pick it up. She miscalculated a bit. What if Sang Shi is not satisfied with it? After all, everyone has different tastes, and Sang Shi's mouth is so picky that he will definitely pick faults. If he praises himself, it will become a slap in the face, won't it? But what she said was like spilled water that couldn't be retrieved. However, Sang Shi is not here, and Shen Mingyue is still quite at ease today. At two or three o'clock in the afternoon, Shen Bingcheng sent a WeChat message to Shen Mingyue. Mingyue, I will probably be sent to work in Nanshan City for a period of time. It is tentatively scheduled to leave next month, and I will leave. You have a bit of time. I cannot cut off contact with Jiang Ze. Really? Why did you suddenly go to Nanshan City? Upon hearing the news that her elder brother was leaving, Shen Mingyue's joy surged one after another in her heart. She couldn't even hold back. Since her elder brother had left, no one had forced her to go on a blind date. It was Mr. Sang who sent me there. I also felt it was quite sudden, and there was no warning before, Shen Bingqing said. He also sent several chat records between Shen Mingyue and Sang Shi. Shen Mingyue looked carefully, as if Sang Shi had first asked about Shen Bingqing's situation, how he has been lately, and what difficulties he has encountered in his work and life. Shen Bingqing's answer was sincere and respectful at first glance. He said it was good, and Sang Shi suggested that he go to Nanshan City to work as a branch manager, stay for one or two years, and be promoted after returning Shen Bingqing seemed to have muttered to himself, Mr. Sang suddenly asked me these questions, and I'm quite strange. After all, my position hasn't reached the level where he personally inquired. Even Shen Mingyue is quite strange. In the afternoon, Shen Mingyue got off work early. Today, she was lucky. As soon as she arrived downstairs, there was a bus that didn't get stuck in traffic and arrived home 20 minutes earlier than usual. I happened to see Yin Zhengdong's Audi drive out of the underground garage. Seeing Shen Mingyue return, his car stopped. Shen Mingyue saw the scratches on his face quite obvious, although it was funny, she also felt very guilty. Why did you come back so early? Yin Xingdong probably didn't expect Shen Mingyue to come back so early, somewhat surprised. He only found out this morning that his face had been scratched by her, so he didn't go to work. Now he plans to go to the company to get a brown sugar cake rake. Now that Shen Mingyue has suddenly returned, he seems to be unable to go. Shen Mingyue said happily, the Mediterranean is not here today, and I am less worried. Moreover, my elder brother has been transferred to Nanshan City by the Mediterranean. I estimate that no one will force me to go on blind dates in the future. Even if I force him, he can't control me even if it's so far away. I'm so happy. Can I treat you to dinner today? Shen Mingyue had a clear idea in her heart. She felt like she owed Yin Jingdong something, so he didn't have to repay the phone money himself. She didn't even make the rice cake for him last night. He watched Shen Mingyue make it, but didn't even take a bite. The Mediterranean Yin Jingdong heard Shen Mingyue say, Mediterranean, one by one, which was very harsh. Chapter 9 Sang Shi also eats at this restaurant. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Shen Mingyue looked up with some pride and said, It's Sang Shi. I gave him a nickname called Mediterranean. Yin Jingdong frowned and asked Shen Mingyue, Have you seen him? No, I heard he's a genius in the legal and financial fields. He's smart and doesn't have long hair, isn't he bald? Besides, I seem to have seen him today, he's short and chubby, Shen Mingyue said naturally. She even turned her head to look at Yin Jingdong's hair, which was black and shiny. At first glance, she knew that he lived a good life and had a great physique, which was completely different from Sangshir. 
Let's go eat, I'm happy today. What do you want to eat? After speaking, Chen Mingyue turned to the car and got on the passenger seat. Four Seasons Restaurant, Yin Jingdong said. Four. Four Seasons Restaurant. Shen Mingyue's expression was very unnatural, with regret overflowing on her face as she wanted to slap herself. Who let Yin Jingdong pick it? Four Seasons Restaurant specializes in high dot and Chinese cuisine, with an average of 500 to 600 yuan per person. A slightly better dish costs tens of thousands. When her family was not bankrupt, they never made such things. She always believed that every meal was hard won, and besides, how could there be a comfortable meal made by herself outside? She thought that Yin Jingdong would understand her financial situation, so she went to eat a big food stall or something. Unexpectedly, the lion spoke loudly and did not eat human suffering. Shen Mingyue was about to politely remind him to change places when Yin Jingdong's car had already arrived at the entrance of the four o'clock hotel. Seeing Shen Mingyue staring at the plaque of the Four Seasons restaurant with a face full of lawsuits, Yin Jingdong unbuttoned his seatbelt and said, What? Do you not want to invite or cannot afford to invite? Yin Jingdong's tone was sarcastic, which made Shen Mingyue very dissatisfied. Please do it. Isn't it just a matter of smashing pots and selling iron to treat him to a meal? It's okay to grit your teeth, but you can't make him look down on you. Shen Mingyue followed Yin Jingdong into the elegant and extremely stylish Four Seasons restaurant. There are not many people now, and there are also private rooms. Yin Jingdong is not used to having too many people outside, so he chose a private room. When he ordered dishes, Shen Mingyue kept an eye on it. Every time Yin Jingdong ordered a dish, Shen Mingyue would have to take a look at the price below, which would make his heart skip a beat. Shen Mingyue roughly calculated that this meal would cost 10,000 yuan. She picked up her phone, checked her credit card limit, and nervously swallowed her saliva. This is not eating, it's throwing money. Halfway through the meal, Yin Jingdong said he was going to the bathroom and got up to go out. When he left, the door was not tightly closed, and a few people happened to pass by outside. By chance, he glanced into the private room and Shen Mingyue's bright and beautiful appearance appeared in front of the outsiders. The door was pushed open. The person in charge said, Shen Mingyue. I am. You are. Shen Mingyue frowned. Even if she didn't know each other, she could probably guess that this person was the second-generation ancestor of the Jiang family, Jiang Ze. He had a playboy appearance and an unruly demeanor. Perhaps he thought he was particularly cool, but in Shen Mingyue's eyes, he was particularly unpleasant. It's really a narrow path for enemies. Your fiancé a Jiang Ze. Jiang Ze walked step by step toward Shen Mingyue. When Jiang Zhe's sister Jiang Yun and Shen Bingcheng got married, Shen Mingyue happened to be taking an exam abroad and didn't come back to attend the wedding. However, she sent a video to wish her brother and sister dot in dot law a happy life and a hundred years of good marriage. When Shen Mingyue's face appeared on the big screen at the wedding, Jiang Zhe's soul was immediately hooked by Shen Mingyue, and from then on, he couldn't forget Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue sneered, I don't have a fiancé a, eh, only a husband. Do you think I'll order this big table alone? Jiang Zhe saw that there was indeed a man's bag next to Shen Mingyue, so there should be two people eating. It's two people, but maybe you and your brother have dinner together. We're already a family, Jiang Zhe said lewdly. He approached Shen Mingyue and touched her fair and delicate skin with his fingers. Then, with a playful smile, he said, TSK TSK, this skin. The fragrance on Shen Mingyue's body stimulated Jiang Zhe, and he couldn't help but wrap his arms around Shen Mingyue's waist, preparing to kiss Fang Zhe. Shen Mingyue felt as if she had been electrocuted, with her arms propped up on Jiang Zhe's chest. She stepped back in disgust and said, Get out of here. If not, I'll call someone else. Call you that so. Called husband. I want to see who your husband really is. He dares to touch my fiancé A.E., tomorrow, I'll break him up. 
Jiang Ze looked like a ruffian. Shen Mingyue thought for a moment and realized that what Jiang Ze said was not false. He, as a lawless and wealthy second dot generation, could do anything. So, she hoped that Yin Jingdong would come back soon, but she didn't want Jiang Ze to see Yin Jingdong. Jiang Ze was still pulling Shen Mingyue into his arms. In a fit of urgency, Shen Mingyue slapped Jiang Ze in the face. Suddenly, the room became quiet. This slap widened Jiang Ze's eyes. Shen Mingyue lost face in front of so many of his followers. He was furious and grabbed Shen Mingyue's clothes tightly, only to hear a prick sound. Shen Mingyue's clothes were torn, revealing a large area of her back. Shen Mingyue was both shy and angry. Just as she was about to slap Jiang Ze again, she saw a young man approaching him and whispering a few words in his ear. Jiang Ze listened and instantly let go of Shen Mingyue, still trembling a bit. Really? Sangshir. Where did you see it? It's at the front desk. He seems to be paying the bill, the younger brother said again. Shen Mingyue also frowned slightly and thought to herself, Sang Shi also came to the Four Seasons restaurant for dinner tonight. Fortunately, we didn't meet in person. If she were to break through with him, her job with an annual salary of 500,000 would be in vain. She felt a chill in her spine. Jiang Ze is afraid of Sang Shi. In Jiangzhou, the Sang family shook off the second place Jiang family in a cliff style. Jiang Ze's ability was not even 1% that of Sang Shi and Sang Shi didn't even pay attention to him. Last time Jiang Ze was messing around at a KTV, he was scolded by Sang Shi for a month and couldn't get out of bed. His legs were broken, and the people of the Jiang family were even afraid to speak. Therefore, when Jiang Ze heard the name Sang Shi, he trembled all over like a mouse seeing a cat. However, he really couldn't bear to part with Shen Mingyue, a pretty girl with a strong personality. He liked her. He changed his face and said with hatred, Shen Mingyue, you wait. Shen Mingyue covered the torn area of her clothes and said coldly, you're not rolling out yet. Why, do you have to wait for Sang Shi to come over? Jiang Zhe's face turned pale with fear, but he couldn't stay here long and left in a gloomy manner. Not long after, Yin Jingdong entered the door. Seeing Shen Mingyue's face slightly change and her clothes torn, he frowned tightly and asked, What's wrong? I ran into that jerk Jiang Ze. He started yelling at me. Shen Mingyue said angrily, her eyes even turning red. She has never been insulted like this since she was young. Big brother wants to marry her to such a person. Jiang Ze. He can't take care of himself anymore. Yin Jingdong took off his suit and put it on Shen Mingyue, then said with some reference. By the way, Sang Shi is also eating at this restaurant, do you know? Shen Mingyue's voice trembled and she said solemnly to Yin Jingdong. Chapter 10 The sender is the person next to the pillow. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. How do you know? Yin Jingdong looked at Shen Mingyue's pale face. The expression of a mouse seeing a cat made Yin Jingdong somewhat amused. When Jiang Ze came in to cause trouble just now, someone saw Sang Shi at the front desk, and Jiang Ze finally gave up. Shen Mingyue seemed to unconsciously start tugging at Yin Jingdong's sleeve, meaning, Let's leave quickly. So afraid of Sang Shi. Yin Jingdong lowered his head and glanced at Shen Mingyue's hand pulling at his sleeve. It's a bit. Over the years, I've inexplicably felt a bit afraid of him. Additionally, I'm afraid he might know that the person ordering is me and drive me away. Shen Mingyue lowered her head and said somewhat dejectedly. Don't you want to eat anymore? Yin Jingdong asked Shen Mingyue. I have eaten well. If you're not full, can you pack it and go home to eat? I'm so scared, Shen Mingyue said with a worried expression. No need. Let's go, Yin Jingdong said, wiping his mouth with a tissue. Shen Mingyue called the waiter to pay the bill, 
and the waiter smiled and said, Miss, the cost of your table has just been settled by this gentleman at the front desk. Shen Mingyue didn't think much, she felt a bit embarrassed. Didn't you ask me to pay for it? Are you afraid I can't afford it? After the waiter left, Shen Mingyue's face blushed slightly, and she lowered her long eyelashes and said to Yin Jingdong. Can you afford it? Yin Jingdong stood up and retorted, much taller than Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue is speechless, and she really can't afford to pay. She grabbed Yin Jingdong's hand and slid against the wall, leaving with a guilty conscience. Unlike Yin Jingdong's magnanimity, Shen Mingyue held a bag to shield her face all the way. Shen Mingyue originally planned to reward Yin Jingdong well, but when she returned home, she found that her aunt had arrived. She stood in front of the bed and dejectedly told Yin Jingdong, who was leaning against the bedside. So, are you really playing tricks on me, said Yin Jingdong as he stared at her with deep meaning Shen Mingyue hurriedly waved her hands and said, No, absolutely not. I really didn't want to play tricks on you tonight. She only said, tonight, not, last night. Last night, she did play tricks on him. She scolded him for too long and made her unable to sleep well. Yin Jingdong seemed to be watching children's tricks, seeing through them but not saying anything, making Shen Mingyue secretly proud. He only said, sleep, and then let Shen Mingyue go to bed. He leaned against the bedside to look at the materials. At this moment, another phone next to Yin Jingdong's bed rang, and it was a WeChat message. Mr. Sang, the matter is over. Jiang Ze can't get out of bed for a month. Yin Jingdong forgot to mute this phone today. He looked at WeChat but didn't reply. Lying next to her, Shen Mingyue seemed to notice something. She exclaimed in surprise, Are you two phones? Yin Jingdong pondered for two seconds and said calmly, Part work, part life. Don't you sleep yet? I was supposed to sleep, but I was woken up by your phone. You can call me with your work number, and I'll save your number. What if your phone runs out of battery in the future and I can't find you? Shen Mingyue said naturally. You can't miss me, said Yin Jingdong, who never called Shen Mingyue. Shen Mingyue flipped over and turned her back to Yin Jingdong. She was a bit unhappy, as it seemed that Yin Jingdong didn't want to tell her his work number. It was estimated that he had contacted a certain woman on this phone. Perhaps he had many ex-girlfriends before marriage, and even after getting married, he never stopped. However, when he contacted other women, Shen Mingyue couldn't say anything. Originally, their marriage was about taking what they needed, and marriage was not about continuing the relationship, but more like a contract. I don't want this question anymore. Shen Mingyue suddenly remembered that Sang Shi had said he would go to the company to pick up brown sugar glutinous rice cake in the evening, so he took out his phone and sent Sang Shi a WeChat message. Sang, I'm sorry to bother you so late. Did you go to the company to pick up brown sugar glutinous rice cake? It tastes a bit bad when it's cold, so I can't eat it tomorrow. Yin Jingdong was mute the phone at the time when it suddenly rang unexpectedly. He glanced and saw that the sender was the person next to him Shen Mingyue quickly turned around and said with some surprise, so coincidental. What's so clever? Yin Jingdong pretended not to know and turned his head to look at Shen Mingyue lying down. I just finished sending me Sang Shi's WeChat, and your phone rang. It's a coincidence, Shen Mingyue said, lifting her phone in her hand. Yes, it's a coincidence. It was also sent to me by my assistant, Yin Jingdong said, calmly turning off his phone and placing it on the bedside table. Your assistant. Shen Mingyue was a bit skeptical and nervous, and the suspicion in her heart had to be confirmed. Is Yin Jingdong sanctuary? Although it's impossible in all aspects, it's just a coincidence. Yes, about the Shanqi case today, Yin Jingdong said calmly. What kind of person is your assistant? Shen Mingyue asked Yin Jingdong. She. She is a person who has obtained a legal professional qualification certificate, Yin Jingdong said. Sure enough, upon hearing these words, Shen Mingyue didn't catch a breath. 
She resumed her previous posture and was ready to continue sleeping. Who are you mocking? Shen Mingyue muttered, what Yin Jingdong said must be about the last time he wanted to be his assistant but didn't have a qualification certificate. However, Shen Mingyue let out a long sigh of relief. If Yin Jingdong were sanctuary, she dared to guarantee that she would definitely die without a burial ground. Tonight, Shen Mingyue did not receive a reply from sanctuary. Shen Mingyue was very dissatisfied and lay in bed muttering, Sangshir definitely didn't treat me like a human. If he goes to the company to pick me up, at least give him a word. All right, since he's like this, if he asks me to cook for him in the future, I won't do it either. I promise to do it. If he asks me to do it, I'll give him rat poison. Shen Mingyue swore to the heavens. Yin Jingdong. Really not doing it. Yin Jingdong felt amused and joked at her. I really don't do it. Shen Mingyue said confidently. The next day, Yin Jingdong probably felt that Shen Mingyue was on vacation and didn't let her take the bus. He took Shen Mingyue to the company, in his words, by the way to the court. After saying goodbye to him, Shen Mingyue went upstairs without looking where Yin Jingdong's car had gone. Shen Mingyue tidied up her desk and brewed coffee from the tea room. As I was returning to the office with coffee, I heard a secretary say, Mr. Sang has come to work. I just went to find him to sign, and I saw that Mr. Sang has made a fool of himself. As he spoke, the secretary giggled and lowered her head. How dare you mock Mr. Sang? If he finds out, there won't be any good fruit for you. Zhu reminded. The secretary who just spoke immediately remained silent. Shen Mingyue didn't know where Sang Shi's face had been disfigured, but she thought to herself that his Mediterranean dignity, like a thirty-year-old man at fifty, was equivalent to plastic surgery. But she didn't say that. In the workplace, if she couldn't say anything properly, it would become an excuse for her boss to wear small shoes. As it approached eleven o'clock, Shen Mingyue began to feel uneasy again, constantly looking at her phone, feeling as if she had been scratched by a cat's paw. She was thinking. Should I ask Sancher in advance? Just then, another secretary entered the office. She was holding the lunchbox of yesterday's Shen Mingyue Xing brown sugar glutinous rice cake in her hand. Mingyue, Mr. Sang asked me to give you the lunchbox. He said he wants to eat dumplings tomorrow noon and asked you to make dumplings for him. The secretary said, just make sure you have the lunch for today. Ah. Shen Mingyue was both embarrassed and surprised. Is she ordering or cooking? Has he become accustomed to picking up Shen Mingyue's wool? Can't I order dumplings from a restaurant? So. Did he eat the brown sugar rice cake I made for him? Shen Mingyue cursed nervously in her heart before asking. The secretary furrowed her brows tightly and said, I don't know if I'll eat or not, but I saw that his trash can seems to have thrown a lot of things. It should be your brown sugar rice cake. Suddenly, a wave of anger emerged from Shen Mingyue's heart. He still wants to eat dumplings tomorrow. He eats a hammer. He said yesterday he would come to pick up the glutinous rice cake, but he didn't, why didn't he? Did he not treat food as food, or did he not treat Shen Mingyue as a person? Of course, Shen Mingyue still had a suspicion in her heart, which was whether Sang Shi knew that the person who ordered the meal was Shen Mingyue. He deliberately wore small shoes for himself, torturing himself in a continuous stream to avenge her refusal to marry back then. If that's the case, then it's terrible. Since there was no clear indication, Shen Mingyue continued to work. After all, the annual salary is 500,000 yuan. At noon, she ordered three dishes and one soup for Sangshir's five-dot-star meal, but fortunately Sangshir didn't say anything. Just as Shen Mingyue wanted to breathe a sigh of relief, his older brother's call came again. He said in a very low voice, Mingyue, Dad has an accident. Come with me to the hospital, and I'll wait for you in the underground garage. <laughs>